Uh, okay, we are back and we are gonna refactor this horrible callback hell code uh, to make it somewhat easier to read. Uh, and we're gonna use promises, um, which maybe is the preferred way to do it these days. Uh, it's gonna come other techniques for doing this, but um, let's stay with promises for now. Uh, you have probably heard about promises in uh, earlier courses. You have probably used them in somehow. Um, if you're gonna do a read up, just check out the MDN uh, page where they explain promises. Uh, the name promises promises just what it's about. You return a promise that you will when the operation is is done. You will. Um, return the result in many ways just like the callback pattern uh, you create promises by using new uh, and you you put in functions um, where you always have two parameters a resolve and a reject the resolve is using for what you are calling fulfill the promises yeah, well, everything is uh, gone great, and you it's completed successfully. Uh, the reject do you we use when we are rejecting the the promises? Well, the operation has failed. Um, before we have used the the promise is called pending, so it's in a state where it's not fulfilled or rejected at all and we're waiting for the operation to to take place uh, promises have uh, different kind of properties and methods uh, promise.all it's a good thing to know about when you are trying to do tasks parallel uh, you you let's say you you wanna write to a file at the same time you you fetching the next page in this case uh, then you're gonna have some way to check if all the promises you started first the uh, fetch task and the uh, write to file task uh, when both these promises are fulfilled we we have all and we can listen so so we can put uh, 20 page fetches at once and with all we know when all are ready. Uh, we can also use race to know when the first is ready um, and so on. And here you can re read about the re reject and resolve also. also. But we're gonna look at it in our example and I'm gonna instead of all these callbacks um, um, we can write it like this. Um, as you see, it's much, much uh, easier to read. It's a more flat structure. Um, in this code, I have included some console log uh, statements. Uh, but, but you see, it's if you compare it to the callback code, it's much, much easier to read. Uh, it's like this. Uh, I'm gonna take you through this code. It's just one thing you see when I save this. Um, I use something I call file appender, uh, which is a module I have created. Uh, and I also, this page load module, page loader, which we um, uh, implemented with the callback pattern in the last video we gonna rewrite it to support promises and as you see I have created a folder called promise and here I have the page loader which now support promises and a file appender that takes the file operation and wraps it around a promise uh, so it will also support promises. But let's start with the page loader. If we look at the old one, we saw that the user had to send in a callback and we were using it to supporting the callback pattern. 
if you look at the promise supported, we don't send in a callback, just the URL. But the first thing we do is we return a promise. So the first line is a return and then a new promise. And in that constructor, we just uh, defining a function um, with our resolve and a reject. This is the promise pattern and the way to use promises. Um, so when we in the app calling get load dot fetch with a URL, we are gonna get this is gonna express as a promise object. Uh, if we go back and look at this uh, promise supported um, page loader, we see that the code for the request is the same. They are using the callback pattern and that's nothing we can do about. We have just wrapped a promise around it uh, and we check the error but if we get the error we do a return and we do reject we something went wrong so we do uh, a reject and we react that error uh, the same thing when the status code is wrong we react a uh, uncreated error but if everything is okay we should do it uh, treat the promise as successful and then instead of uh, the callback we use resolve so we use these parameters reject when something is wrong and resolve when we will return uh, the stuff um, we wanted. So if we look at this, uh, we're using page load dot fetch, putting in a URL. We can hook up uh, the then function uh, on this uh, instance. And that takes a function and since the page loader, uh, oh, that's the old one. Uh, the page, it's resolved with the HTML, the data. We add a function that takes this data and we know at, at this place, okay, we have fetched the page and we can get the title and we can do the other stuff. Uh, if something gets um, will be wrong and we reject the promises, we always can hook up a catch phrase in the end of all this. You see, in this case, we have uh, tasks that has to, to be done in a specific order. So we have changed when, when the first task is uh, correct, we use then and then we do the next task and so on. But if some of these tasks returns an error, we are always gonna end up in the catch uh, and we can take care of that error. So we don't have to take care of the error in uh, the error handling in each uh, of the all the stuff and that's a great thing you saw in the callback pattern uh, that we used uh, we we have to take care of the error in every uh, anonymous function and that and that didn't look too great uh, to do and it's hard to read that code uh, okay so we have used the page load with the fetch and we have then uh, and we get the data and then I use something I call file appender and that's the other uh, promise supported module I have and as I said it's just a wrapper around the uh, file system append file which is uh, a callback system uh, so I get an error I do react or I just uh, do resolve and I don't send any data in this so this is a pretty simple um, uh, wrapper around it that returns a promise instead of using callbacks. Um, this module uh, exposes a method called append file. And you see I use this, I have forgotten to load file appender uh, require and I gotta load this lib promise 
promise and file appender like this. Uh, then we don't need uh, fs. We are taking care of all that in in this module. Uh, and you see this append file uh, take the string, uh, the path to the file we wanna write to, uh, the string or the text we wanna write, uh, just like before. And and of course this is gonna return a promise instance. So we can hook up another, then treat it as the same. It takes a function since this append file doesn't uh, send us any data or something. It's just an empty resolve. Um, uh, it's an empty function and, and we get on with it. We have been uh, written to the file. Uh, we can do the new page load, which returns a, a promise instance, uh, of course, and then we can hook up then, and so on. So we get a chain of tasks that are done asynchronously, um, but it looks like we're writing code in a synchronous way, uh, which is much easier to understand, and we can chain these promises in a good way to do uh, this thing, then this, and then, and then, and so on. And we have the catch for the error in the end. Um, as I said, uh, there are reasons why we do asynchronous programming on the, the Node platform. We are just using a single thread and we, we do things asynchronously to, to, to have this thread taking care of new tasks all the time. Uh, the problem with asynchronous programming is that it's hard to program with callback. It's easily to get ugly code, hard to understand, hard to implement, hard to uh, debug and stuff like that. Promises help us with this to make the code look more synchronously. Uh, and that's what we want. I see I have one error uh, I'm using the old page load that supported uh, uh, the callback, so I must put promise here like this. So I ha I load the page loader module that supports promise. Okay, should we check it out? Uh, I'm gonna remove all these uh, old files just to see, so we get uh, the new stuff. Uh, let's see if this works. Um, mm -mm, we do it with GitHub. And you see, one, two, three, four, ready. Well, it seems to... Here we have the headlines, and here we have the title. Let's try another. Uh, don't uh, use the default in this case. Fetch the page, wrote the title, fetch search page, and we're ready. Uh, and we appended the DN Nyheter site, the title of the DN.se, and uh, the headers should be there for the search result. I don't know what you're gonna do with this information, but uh, anyway. Uh, okay, so as you can see, it's much better to use promises. Uh, it's much easier to use other modules that has support for promises. That can be a, a tip to, to look up uh, when you, instead if you, if you look at uh, well, the file append file, it's a core thing, so you maybe will be stuck with the callback stuff here. But if we check the request uh, package, it's supporting the callback pattern, but maybe someone has have written another uh, package that support promises. You can use it in a much easier way and you don't 
have to wrap it in yourself to do all this like I do in, in this example. Um, but of course I want to show you the difference. You, you should know about the callback pattern and you should definitely know about promises and how to, to use them. Uh, and here is an example of doing task 1, task 2, task 3 in a specific order. And remember uh, in some uh, assignment exercises uh, maybe you could do uh, tasks parallel so you use the promise.all instead, instead of uh, uh, then so you can uh, do multiple tasks at once and, and let the promise tell you when, uh, when um, all of them are ready. But in this case we just use the then chain. So this, this is the end of this video. I'm gonna record another one that is gonna combine promises with something we call generators which is a new shiny thing in the new specification but we got support for it on the Node.js platform. Uh, it's gonna simplify this code a bit more. So check the next video out as well.